All right. It's tilted like this. But the Dairy Council thought they could take us off the air, but not us. We <laughs> just switched phones. It may or may not have been the battery in the phone going low because it wasn't charging because the cord has to be plugged in the opposite way. But personally, I think it was the industry that tried to shut us down by making faulty iPhone equipment at the gas station. And personally, I think it was Dr. Garrett because he didn't charge his phone all the way. That it's just, is, it's just a thought. Is it white milk always blames problems on on Patrick? Wow. That's how it is. All right. So where were we? Where were we? I hope we get everybody back. We were just about to tell this deep dark secret of the dairy industry until they shut us down. <laughs> What were we saying? We were talking about food pyramids and did you oh. get to calcium and protein? Oh, yeah, yeah, because the calcium and the cow and the, it doesn't eat the dairy. and uh, yeah. So, like even a horse, all right? Uh, I always like this example. If a horse plows the field all day long, right, and you want that cow to be have strong bones, strong muscles, do you feed it like a, a, a shake after it gets done? Always a whey protein shake. That's right, and 12 eggs. That's what I feed all of my livestock. So the strongest animals in the wor world, so if we're talking about like protein, the strongest animals in the world for the most part are vegetarians. So a gorilla that's six times stronger than a human, probably two and a half times stronger than me. Um, <laughs> two and a half times. All right. Two times stronger. So <laughs> its diet is half greens, half dairy. No. Half greens, <laughs> half, greens. half fruit and vegetables. Yeah. So even that gorilla doesn't drink a cow's milk to get strong. In fact, six times stronger than a human. Neither does uh, an elephant. It doesn't drink a cow's milk to get all strong, right? So if you look at nature and how it's developed, everything nurses for, you know, a couple of years at most, and then you stop making that lactase enzyme. And then uh, you just eat real fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, and greens. And you have strong muscles, strong bones, and you get enough vitamin D from the sun. The sun will produce four to 40,000 IUs of vitamin D uh, within 15 minutes. That's uh, uh, so around, get some sun, just like the cow that makes the milk. Okay. Well, what? Well, now what? said. No. no. Oh, please. Yeah. Uh, wait. wait. So see, I'm telling you, the dairy industry knows. We've already said all the stuff. They know. They just messed with the, the video again. Yeah. Yeah. And the little yeah. thing came up and said, shut it down. <laughs> it did not. Shut it down. Okay. So, the idea of drinking dairy is, is just kind of made up. And it's part of the food pyramid, but that's because the pyramid is based off of money, not based off on um, health. So what do we do instead? What do we do instead? We can't have oh, dairy. Yeah. And like some of us who've already been on this journey for a little while have finally come to accept the fact that you don't always have to have something dairy-like in your life. Yeah. But what about those who would like something dairy-like in their life? Well, so... Uh, there's dairy's cousin, the nut milks. Uh, so if you take basically a handful of nuts and a quart of water, blend it up, put it through a cheesecloth, that's nut milk or seed milk, right? So coconut milk is a great substitute. Uh, almond milk, hemp milk. Um, this is if you don't have else? an allergy to any Cashew of those. milk. Cashew milk. Cashew milk. Um, did you say coconut milk already? You did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's quite a few that are available now. I mean, this this used to be a really hard talk like 10 years ago because patients were like, there were not these alternatives everywhere. Right. So those are always good. And just try different ones and see what you like. Uh, we have people that hate coconut milk. We have people that love coconut milk. We have people that uh, love cashew milk, which is not a nut. Uh, it grows under an apple in South America. But um, people love that one. I like cashew milk. Um, with soy milk, now there's a big interesting concern. Uh, so some people, um, they think that soy causes you estrogenic cancers, and that's absolutely 100% not true. 
And we know that because the countries that eat soy don't have those cancers, uh, like Americans do. Is that... But we'll, t we'll drink a bunch of dairy, which has high estradiol. We'll take birth control, which has estradiol. We'll take hormone replacement therapy that has estradiol. We use colognes and perfumes that have estradiol in there. And then when those guarantee that you get estrogenic cancers, then we say, oh, yeah, those are fine. Those but are fine. But we blame soy. But don't eat that damn soy. Because maybe it might do something. Now, sure, we know these others will. Is that what Sherry tells you? Sherry tells you the about food. Something? No. Sherry is being converted by the food pyramid people. <laughs> so, you know, that's the so thing. There's, what? There are conflicting views still on soy, even outside you, of that argument. No? All right. Are you pushing your anti-soy agenda? No. I just I, bought tempeh today. But I think what I just learned is that I can't question the doctor. <clears throat> that's right. Because <laughs> we live in America. <laughs> so, no, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's anti-soy, but it's the same with potatoes, right? We eat 160 pounds of sugar, and the whole country gets fat, and then we say, well, stay away from those potatoes. But aren't there better choices of soy? Isn't there a spectrum of good and bad choices for soy, too, though? Shouldn't we go with fermented soy or and yeah. organic soy versus well, right. having soy everything? Yeah, but that's not the hormonal part. Okay. So that's just the health part. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, if you drink soy milk, uh, you just want to make sure it's organic soy milk. Okay. Uh, we have a question here. Do you need to have non-GMO GMO soy? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And organic means non-GMO, but non... No, wait. But non-GMO doesn't mean organic. So, you always want to make sure it's, it's organic um, mm -hmm. uh, soy. Non-GMO if you're going with. Yeah. So edamame, tempeh, tofu, and you're right. Like the um, the tempeh and the the sprouted tofu, sprouted tempeh is way better. Fermented. But yeah. for the milk, it's just a matter of organic, and you know, don't drink tons of it anyways. Yeah, and if you have so. a reaction to it, then pay attention to that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, you might look at ingredients in some of the nut milks and seed milks and kind of say, what's the least amount of crap that's in there? Or not crap so much, but just stuff. Yeah. Most of them don't have a bunch of crap. Like Eighth Eighth Continent, they have a bunch of crap in their stuff, right? So, so uh -oh. I have a question, no. Doctor G. What do you think about Daya. this? Yeah. So I bet you some of you guys have had Daya. So what do you guys think? I know of, it's backwards, of that? but so these are like the cheese slices He's... that are non-dairy. Yeah, does anybody like Daya? Does anybody have favorites? Favorite substitutes? Favorite. Favorite brands? Yeah, so that has uh, the least amount of ingredients. So, mm. and for cheese, it's not all that uncommon uh, to have like non dairy cheese because that's what I think uh, American slices are. Yeah. I feel like even There's if your cheese Americans. is processed, your your fake cheese is processed, is that that's it not the cheese? It tastes like paper. <laughs> that's what separates the cheese. This is weirdo. Terrible. Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> um, there it is. There's some cheese. So, is this the lesser of two evils? If you had to choose between fake cheese and real cheese, uh, is fake cheese the lesser of two evils? This smells like cheese. Here we go. He's never had it before. I've never, so I've never eaten uh, cheese. I always think of it like Frankenstein, where it's just like, it's not cheese, but it looks like cheese, but. I don't think it's bad. This is a little bit weird eating on hmm. television, but. So, this tastes enough like cheese. And it feels like cheese. That's true. Yeah, it does have car carrageenan. Carrageenan? Yeah, so carrageenan is from seaweed. And some people have sensitivities to it, but not everybody. Is, they, is it bad for you, though? No, it's a thickening agent. And they put it in um, um, nut milks to make it thicker, like real milk. Okay. But people have problems with it. It's, you know, it's one of those things where you extract it out of seaweed. And seaweed is awesome. But if it's too much, then it might cause a problem. So now they just switch to alginate. So instead of seaweed, they're just using an algae. 
Okay. So. All right. So I give this like a B. A B. And I think if if this was on a like a like it's a sandwich, but uh, like a sandwich with gluten free bread and maybe like a chipotle uh, veganese, it'd be pretty damn good. Yeah, they say you, and they say it melts too. Oh, it melts. Oh, so you can make a gluten free grilled cheese out of this. Or if you're if you're playing around with processed foods that day, <laughs> I mean the ideal is to go with whole foods. The huh. ideal is to go with can you name them fruits. Vegetables, guts, seeds. Oh, nuts and seeds, and fruits and vegetables. Berries. Oh, berries, legumes and greens. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, greens. Yeah. Yes. So these are actually pretty good. I was very surprised. Some of you guys have tried the um, the shredded stuff, so I think that's what Rachel's talking about. Is um, making like gluten free pizza. Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Put it on tacos. So Deb, um, Deb Stewart. Yep, there you are. Uh, <laughs> she says not a fan. Not a fan. Okay, so I was going to suggest that, but that's not. I don't Dad know. Dad keeps I... trying. It's one big fat experiment. I think. Yeah. Doing this, you're experimenting to see, you know, what you like. You're experimenting to see what you might react to or not react to. Um, keep experimenting. Because you'll start figuring it out, and it'll get only get easier and easier and easier and easier. And that's going to be my takeaway. Sounds quite college. So what about other substitutes? So avocado is a really good substitute for cheese. Like, so for Mexican food, putting a slice of avocado on there and making guacamole and putting it on there is good. And you yeah, and that gives you that pizza. fat. It gives you the good fat that you're... Sometimes I'm craving just more calories or just something more rich. Yeah. And the avocado, I think that's helpful for that. What about, like, avocado on top of, like, a taco pizza that's gluten-free? I'm telling you, avocado doesn't taste like cheese. Don't expect it to taste like cheese. I know, but if it's a taco pizza, there's a place in town called Pizza Taco. I think you could do anything. I think you could do anything. Experiment. Yeah. So, uh, dye is a pretty good one. The nut milks are a good one. Now, with sour cream, there's a good product called Tofuti. And Tofuti sour cream or Tofuti cream cheese, they seem to work pretty good. Like, I bought those. My kids, I put them in uh, to make the mashed potatoes creamier and that kind of stuff. And I, they don't notice that at all. They don't know that it's not real cream cheese. Yeah. And you can do, like, uh, you know, there's a restaurant called Lotus Leaf, and they have a pistachio cream cheese, uh, or a pistachio cheesecake that I love. Um, and so they have a nut crust, and then they, uh, I don't know what they use for the ingredients, but it, it was fabulous. It tasted awesome. No, okay. Did it break? You break? It did for a second. See, um, once we stop talking about the dairy, so, then it starts letting us work. Okay, so it's still, ideally, you still want whole foods. That doesn't necessarily include dairy or dairy substitutes. Right. But you if you're mean, going to play around with processed, a little bit of processed foods, you're going to have a processed foods cheat, or you just want to be and act and feel like a normal human being, because <laughs> that's how we were raised. A being? Um, right. B <laughs> E A N. A human being? <laughs> what is that? Then you can try some of these substitutes. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And you could probably take like a gluten-free tortilla and make a... A gluten-free uh, tortilla? A tortilla. Ah. It's ah. part of my Texas background. Right. Is the that the scientific the pronunciation? <laughs> Yo quiero tor tortilla. 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 <laughs> And Maria. Okay. Yeah. So, what's your takeaway? We're we're uh, at an hour now. Oh, okay. So, uh, go ahead as as we finish here. But go ahead if you guys would and post any of the substitutes that you like, just so that everybody else in the uh, forum here or the webinar can actually um, can see what other people like and, and maybe try new things. Um, 
Yeah, so. uh, we really appreciate all of your comments. Thank you. Sorry about the technical difficulties tonight. Um, I'm seeing another comment. Salad from Chipotle. Gluten-free, fresh Ooh, veggies. Yeah. Add guacamole. Yes, I had yes, Chipotle yes, yes. today. Yes, I always um, use guac and some cheese. That's a good place to go if you want to get a, a, basically a Whole Foods meal. Yeah, no, that, Chipotle is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so my takeaway is pretty simple. Kill Whitey. From beginning to end, he doesn't let it go. I think, I think we're starting something like a movement. I think <laughs> I'm gonna say eliminate dairy. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you yours, and I will take mine, and keep experimenting. Keep experimenting. That's my takeaway. I don't know if I can eat all this cheese. If you, if you have any last questions, plug those into us um, and we will address all of those questions especially those of you that are watching after the fact that aren't watching live that check in afterward or yep. are watching the rest of it later and you have a question that comes up um, plug that question in for us so that we can answer it for you and um, um, oh, help you out that's right and Deb I'm drinking the woman womankind tea just so you know because I'm in, I have four daughters. I'm in touch with my feminine side. It's everything's gonna go to hell in a handbasket in a second. <laughs> That's her takeaway. That's her takeaway. Okay. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Bye, you guys. And if the Dairy Council asks what my address is, don't, don't tell, tell them. them. <laughs> Next week we'll kill another whitey. <laughs>